welcome to string test program in this lecture we'll be taking a look at string test.java and this Java program will we'll be looking at the different methods that we've learned of the string class we will be applying the string object and its different methods and then comparing strings and checking whether they're equal to each other and things like that so just messing around with strings and we've learned a lot about strings and we use them a lot so it seems right that we um, practice using some of the different methods so I'm gonna start off we're gonna start off by constructing strings so I'm just gonna construct a string and then we're gonna look at it so let's say we have string s s1 equals new string happy so we've we've um, created a string object and this string object um, has a name of s1 and um, has a value of happy and that's how you construct a string that's basically it it's as simple as that so if I were to print this out it would the computer would print out happy and let's take a look at that so let's see let's go compile and then let's run and as you can see happy is printed out now well, let's let's um, let's add on a little bit so let's say I want the, I actually wanted s1 to be happy space person so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to add on to this string so that it's happy it's now its value is now happy space person so I'll go s1 equals s1 which is happy so happy plus space person so what this is doing is this is taking the or original value of s1 which is happy and adding on a space and person and when you combine those two strings together you get happy person and that's exactly what we want so now let's print this out we'll print it out one more time and see um, how its new value will update so right here s2 sorry s1 still we're still at s1 so now let's compile again now we're printing s1 twice as you can see the first time it prints happy the second time it prints happy space person because we added on the space person right over here and now let's say we want to change the value of s1 and let's say we always wanted the value of s1 to be monkey and we just we've been messing around we actually want it to be monkey that's it and that's exactly what the value um, s1 will now be so once you set it to a value of monkey its value is now monkey and now when I compile and then I run you can see it prints out happy happy person the first two values and the third time when we change its value to monkey it prints out monkey so this is just basic constructing strings and assigning values now let's take a look at some of the string class methods the first method that we should take a look at today um, first method I'd like to take a look at today is the length method so the length method um, returns an integer and it the integer basically represents how many characters um, are in a specific um, are in a specific uh, string? So, for example, I could say something like um, system dot out dot println, and I could say print out s one dot length. And this does not take any parameters, so therefore the parentheses don't have anything between it. And if you look over here, this um, string has a total of fi uh, five characters. So H is one character, A is two characters, P is three characters, P is four characters, and Y is five characters. So now you know that it has five characters. And now when we compile and we run, we should get five printed out because that's how many characters it has. So we print out, and as you can see, we get five in the output. Now let's say that we um, increase let's say we put a space right over here at the end and the space is actually considered a character so now when we print out it should read a value of six because now there's six characters including the space so let's run it again and see what happens and as you can see when I run this um, it comes out to a value of six now let's let's um now that we've looked at the length method before we move on to the next method I'm gonna change the value of s1 from happy to happy person this is the value of s now let's take a look at something I something that's called the substring method so with the substring method let's take a um let's take any um let's take any uh string let's say I love AP computer science 
okay, and dot substring. So we're calling the substring method, and the substring method takes one argument, and the one argument that the substring method will be taking is the is an integer that indicates the index, the start index. So the start index is um, the substring. Basically, what it does is it creates a substring. A substring is when a portion of the string is only displayed, just a portion of the string. So it takes um, it uh, substring method creates a portion uh, substring or a portion of the an existing string. So in this case, the existing string is I love AP Computer Science. So I'm just gonna put in a <clears throat> integer value and then we're gonna see what happens. So let's say I put in a value of three. Now let's let's first take a look at what happens and then we can um, understand exactly why whatever happens happens. Let's go right here. Let's put the parentheses around this and the parentheses around that. So whatever the substring is, it's going to be printed out by the computer. So compile, then let's run. And as you can see, um, it's printed out OVE AP Computer Science. So as you can see, it's removed the I space L and we are now left with OV com AP Computer Science. And this is because of the substring method. So now let's understand exactly what's happening. So what the substring method does is it takes an argument of integer type and that argument indicates the index value of the starting character of this substring. So so the i over here, the i is in the zero index. So one thing to remember about computer science is counting always starts with zero. So i is considered in the zero index. The space is considered to be the one index. The l is considered to be the two index. And the three is considered uh, always considered to be the three index. So as you can see, we've said substring three. So it'll be and so then the computer knows that the starting index is three. So basically, the starting character is O. And then the, since that's the only parameter, the computer goes from O and all the way to the end of the string. So if I were to change this substring from three to two, the character in index two is L. So this program, this would print out to be love com AP computer science. So let's see what happens. And as you can see, love AP computer science is printed out. <clears throat> now let's say that you don't want the entire, you don't want the entire um, AP computer science, uh, AP computer science to be printed out. You just want it to say love and then maybe love AP. That's it. You don't want it to say the computer science part. You don't want to go all the way till the end of this um, and the end of the string. This is where the second substring method comes in. The, sub, the second substring method also returns a string. It has the same method name, which is substring. The only difference there is with this, this second substring method is, is that it takes two parameters. So this, this reminds us of a concept called, um, reminds us of a concept called uh, method overloading and method overloading is when there are two two or more methods um, in a class that have the same name and same return type and the only difference between them is the number of parameters or the type of parameters so here we have um, two different uh, we're gonna um, use a substring method this time with two parameters so we'll put another integer indicating the end index so if we want to go to love um, AP computer science we go love, we want to say love AP. So we'll go, this is the second, this is the second index, three index, four index, five index, six index, seven index, eight index. So P is on the eight, on index eight. So you, you would probably think we should put eight over here. And that's completely logical. However, let's run this program and see what comes up. So now let's compile this program and see what happens. So now that we've compiled, we'll run. And as you can see, it prints out love A and not love AP, which is what we want. And the reason for this is this 8 actually needs to be a 9. And you might be wondering why, because the as we know, the P is on the um, in on index 8. But the reason we need to put 9 is because the N index 
or the end index is not included. The character in the on the end index is not included in the substring while the character on the start index is. So because it's not included, you always need to go one ahead. So if it if if you need to stop at the if you need to go up to characters till the uh, character at index eight, you put nine. If you want to go up to characters on index ten, you go eleven. And now when we change this to nine and we compile again and we run we see that we get love AP which is our desired output so we used um, the substring method with one and two parameters with one parameter we indicate the start index and let it print out a substring that goes from the start index to the end and then with the second um, substring method we use two parameters which indicates the start and the end index now let's take a look at the last um, the last uh, last um, method that we'll be taking a look at and that's the index of method and what the index of method does it tells us the location of a specific string with, within another string so let's say that we want to find out a string um, we want to find out the location of a string um, within s1 so what we do is we do s1 dot index of and then over here we could put let's say we want to find out where the P, P, Y is located. You want to find out which index it's located at. Now we can already figure out what the output's going to be because um, we know that this is the zero, zero index zero, index two, and then index three, four, and five contain P, P, Y. And the output's going to be P three because um, sorry, the output's going to be um, two. The reason the output is going to be two is because um, it starts the this entire phrase starts at two. So what the computer does is it puts the first occurrence of it and the, it only returns one integer. The index of method only returns one integer and it returns the first occurrence which occurs at the care um, at index two. So the return should be index two or it should be two. And let's run let's compile and oh sorry I forgot to print it out so let's me do something let me add a system.out.println right around here system.out.println and put parentheses around this and here we go let's compile again now compile and run and as you can see 2 is printed out because that's where ppy starts and now let's change this phrase let's say we're looking for uh, B. We're just looking for the location of a single character B. So let's try again. Let's compile. Now before we run this we can see that there's no B in here. So we may get an error. So we don't get an error. We actually get a result of negative 1. And the reason for that is the thing with an index of method is that when you um, search for a character or a phrase or some type of string within another string and it's not present the computer returns a value of negative 1. Now this is extremely useful because we can be able to um, check if let's say we can say if <clears throat> s1.index of and some string is equal equal to negative 1 we know that that whatever string or phrase is not present within the answer. And now the last few um, methods we're going to be looking at are the equals and compare to method. So the equals to method um, will be, equals method will be used to compare strings and see if they are equivalent to each other. So let's say I define another string right over here. String s2 equals new string. And that's it. I'm not gonna give it a value, and I will say s1. Uh, sorry, s2 is equal to s1. So now I'm giving them the same memory allocation. So here, if I check s1 dot equals s2 what I'll see here is what I'll see over here is that this should return true because they have the same memory allocation so I'll go compile and they have the same value now because I've set them equal to each other and as you can see true comes out so we're gonna be the equals method is used similarly as it was is with objects the other method that's available is the compares to method and what the compares to method does is it compares two strings and determines which one comes before in alphabetical order so let's try it out first let's say we have another string is sad person so what we know is that sad person would come after happy person in alphabetical order so now let's do something that I uh, it's called um, s1 dot compare compare to so we're using the compare to method 
and the compare to method re returns an integer actually the compare to method returns an integer and we can interpret that integer to determine the relationship between the two strings let's compile and then let's run and as you can see um, this um, I'm oh, sorry so right now it came out to be zero and the reason it came out to be zero is because these two are equal to each other so when a, a compare to method returns zero that's another way of checking whether s1 is equal to s2 so let's delete this line and run it again now without setting the value of them equal to each other let's compile again and let's run and the value comes out to be negative 11 so what we know is when the value is less than zero that means that the first s1 is uh, is um, comes before s2 in alphabetical order now if let's say that this one this was to become happy and happy and this was to become sad then the value would be greater than zero because um, s1 will come after s2 so let's look at it again and let's run it and as you can see this time the value comes out to be 11 which is greater than zero and the reason it comes out to be greater than zero is because s1 comes after s2 in alphabetical order so today we constructed strings, we looked at some different methods such as the length method, the substring method, the index of method, the compare to method, and the equals method, and we applied them to string objects.